Welcome back to Ship Happens. What's up? <laughs> right, so what are we doing today? Right, we've got to get all the ballast from here down yeah. to there. Yeah. And then we can plug the sole back in. Yeah. And we don't have to lift it up for ages. But I've got a, a plan. Oh, go on. <laughs> we need to figure out where the finished floor is going. Mm. And then maybe put some beams across. Because then that keeps the whole tide. So if you, when we do put weight in it, it doesn't really. Yeah. Squish the hole out. And to be honest, the, the floor pieces that we've got are awful. Yeah. You can't even really stand no. on them, can you? No. Okay, so that's a plan. set the proper levels of them um, once they're close. So we've, we've obviously measured them, cut them, so we need to make them fit. So we think our calculations, they're actually going to sit on top of the, the stringers on this side. So let's get them close to the stringers now. So I'm going to use my trusty... I'm like sat in the corner trying to film this. It's quite difficult, things we do. It's not been easy filming in this bilge to be honest with you because like everything just concentrates into one little area and so like you have to wedge yourself in and blah 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 right so what we need to do is set the angles now of the hull so we're going to use our little the dividers some of the nautical termers <laughs> dividers with a sharpie attached to them so we're not the best um So we'll just whiz that off for now, and then we'll um, reassess. So I've brought me a little portable bandsaw. I'm going to get up and down at the village now, have you? Get a pen and write P and S on. So you can't get it like upside down and confused. P S. P for port. S for starboard. Oh, I thought you were missing an eye. So a bit of an issue with the boat, obviously there's nothing square really. I mean, we're used to working in vans with like nothing square, but this is genuinely, we haven't even got a flat floor to work on. Apart from this, when it's done really, but... So how we did it before, we basically levelled it off, off the top of the engine bearers. Because this is going to be our finished floor height, because it gives me plenty of clearance for my baldy head. Is that the word? I don't know. The, um, so we're going to set like low. So the finished floor is going to be like this high. Leo would be impressed. <laughs> Maybe you should get your chainsaw out and impress yeah, the yabba yeah, a lot. Yeah, sure. <laughs> There's a couple of sculpts there. So a little, a little bit of fine fettling. Do you have a look before we do the fettling? So, I had to cut around the bolt. Uh, just a tiny bit more on the back edge here. Uh, this side is getting close. So I think now we're going to make some wedges to go in here. Because we're going to be bolting through. Um, but by the time, if we cut it out, then by the time we remove the material, then it's going to make it weak. So I think we'll make a wedge so when we bolt it, it doesn't compress too much. Right, 
There we go. There's the wedge that we need to make. With my little paper template. Oh! <laughs> I just got it and it fell behind the shutter. <laughs> that wasn't very clever, was it? <laughs> Right, take two. <laughs> oh, I caught it in a drill down there, so. It was perfect as well. It was perfect. So there's my wedge template, but you know, you can't really draw around a piece of paper. So, lick it. <laughs> it's got a bit of mud on there. Stick it on my piece of wood. You look the right side. <laughs> Don't worry, Tony, we can, we can tailor the ends. Now we're going to do. Get some spray paint. And give it a little dust. Alright. Have you been watching like arts and crafts programs? So then get rid of that. No, check that out. Looks like it's still stuck on there. Right. So I get my band saw. I've got no. Can you just look at like the feet space we're working with? Right, I'm gonna get out. You get out. Get out my bill. Your hair's just in the way. <laughs> your feet are in the way. Should give your hair tied up. Should we should we band saw it off? Yes. <gasps> no. I think a grind would get it off that easy, but I don't want. I think it'd snag on the teeth, wouldn't it? And the teeth would like it just drag it in. <laughs> what ends up looking like you? I thought she was going to crumble under the pressure, but pretty good wedge. It's a pretty good wedge, but the biggest test is does it fit? <laughs> what you should do is you could you could merge them out and like put them um ship up and door wedges. <laughs> Tell me about your problems, Jim. Got ninety nine problems. <laughs> well, don't wait in one. <laughs> um, so. Obviously, it needs to, it's the corner because of the angle of the boat. It needs cutting the, the corner off. So. I've got a better plan. An update plan. Go on, what's your update? Right, so, so we're actually having quite a good day today where like someone goes, hang on a minute, stop because I've got a better idea. We're like, go away with your stupid ideas and sort of put it on there now. Oh, yes. Right, now I'll draw around it. On the bottom of it. Did you have gloves on? How many things you got? Eleven. Still got all your fingers? Yeah, still got all eleven. <laughs> Lost your toes. <laughs> so how does your wedgie fit? Great. Obviously it's not millimetre perfect, but this frame doesn't isn't flush with the packer, so not you know what I mean? So you've got a little bit of a gap there, but not a bit of a glue can't fix, but it's only just to get the, the bolt through there, doesn't it? So I'm happy with that. So we'll do the same to the other side. So like my wedges? They're actually very good, very impressed. I was going to measure them and the taper of them and stuff like that. And Jeremy goes, use this paper. Brilliant. So now we've established our forward beam. Now we're going to be working on this, this other beam here. So we now know it goes from the engine bearer to the forward beam, which we've just installed, because we did take quite a while to actually calculate 
the levels of that. So now we've got a beam across there, which Jim's going to put a foot on. So to our forward beam, and now we're going to clamp this one up, and that will give us our level then. While we're talking about engine bearers, we've had a lot of people question our engine bearers, saying like, why did they come all the way to the front of the boat? So, will you answer that one? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't build the boat. <laughs> So I think the majority of boats, they have like a big keel, don't they? We haven't got a massive keel. We've got like a small keel, then a keelson, and then our primary structure, which is actually inside the boat, which is um, basically the engine bearers. So the two forward here are the two middle engine bearers. We've got four in total. So we've got two engines sat on their own pair of engine bearers. So these ones come all the way to the front of the boat, basically provides like a bit of a datum for the floors. Um, or the soles, so um, yeah. So I lost, I lost me because I got the word wrong. Mm -hmm. I got, I lost me, uh, me train of thought. I thought oh, everyone's got to panic and go. Oh my god, it's not a floor, it's a sole. Anyway, so all, all of the soles basically land on it throughout throughout the hull. Um, but another fantastic thing because the engines are basically screwed down raw to, to these engine bearers. The actual thrust of the boat gets pushed through the props, through the propeller, through the prop shaft, through the gearbox, through the engine, and then that's what drives the boat forward. So the whole boat is moving off the engine bearers, technically, because that's what's pushing us through the water. So if they're right through the boat, that's fantastic. Should we go and have a look where the end? Yeah, I don't actually know where the end, and I don't know where the 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 two outbound ones start. So maybe we'll go and lift up some floors and have a quick look, shall we? So, there's the engine bearers in the engine room. So we're basically, right forward in the bow, we've got these two big, big structures here, haven't we? So these go right through the bow, all the way to the stern, all the way, to, almost to the bow, as you can see, it's like, what, eight foot away from the bow. But then we've got these engine bearers here, which, if you follow me, on, keep up. So these basically, it's quite scary under air to be honest with you. Oh, ballast! <laughs> so these terminate at this bulkhead, you can't really see properly but they basically terminate here because obviously the boat gets narrower so you can't have these big giant engine bearers and it's the same on the, um, the port side. Um, so we'll look aft. Come on! So, I've got our two central engine bearers, which are these. So they to go right almost to 70 foot, they'll probably go 60 foot on the boat. Then we've got the outer engine bearers here. Can you see? Yes. And then obviously the same on the starboard side. So hopefully, you might understand a bit more. Hopefully we do. <laughs> do you understand me better? Yeah. It's like you think an engine bearer is just a piece that your engine sits on, but it's not. They go through yeah. the majority of the boat. Well, they do in our, they do in our boat. I could technically have my terminology wrong, but the big chunks of wood which go right through the boat. Yeah, we should write a book with our own terminology. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah. If, if anyone thinks they're not called engine bearers and knows the proper name for them. The other day the engines are sat on them, aren't they? And they go right through the boat. Yeah. There you go. Let us know. I did a chisely thing. 
So if she's finished jam, we've got to take the cream and to see if it fits. So should we see if it fits jam? Yes. Well, she's already made it fit. I was expecting to pull it away and then we'll do it for the camera. Wow, look at it fits. Top Not moving, throw. I've lined it up. <laughs> there we go. So can you explain why we did it slightly different on this one? On the forwards ones, we done the wedges because otherwise we would have had to take too much away from the frame and it wouldn't have been strong. But this side only needs the little notch, so that's why we haven't done wedges and we've notched it in round the um, stringer. So these are, we're making some bolts to go through to fix them bits of floors. So we're making our own bolts just with threaded bar because we can cut them to the length we need. It's A4 stainless. So yeah, right, I'll just go and tidy up the ends of these on the, what do you call that thing? The bench the, grinder. The bench grinder that wants to kill well, you. Give them a tip on how you get the ends fresh. It's just trying to find his nuts. It doesn't usually take this long. It's probably nuts. <laughs> so obviously when you just cut something with the grinder, it's dead hard to get the nut on because of like what you've just done to the end. So what we do, we get all of our bolts and we take them into the engine room. So what happens in the engine room? You press the button and you turn it on. There we go, now we've done that. Going nice and easy. That's my crap tip of the day. She's only happy when she paints. <laughs> right, so we'll let the paint dry, then we'll go for some dinner, then we'll do the big glue up. Yay. Right, let's get down dirty and messy with some goop. So, you know my opinion? Never have enough goop, can you? Okay. So that's the full running loose. We happy with that one? Yeah. Okay, so put the aft one in now, then we'll tighten them both up together. And we'll check the level. Might be able to tweak it a bit if we need to. So I'd literally just been filming this aft one and I thought I'll turn the camera off while we tighten up the front one. And what have you done? I made a boo-boo. What have you done? I'm in Spanish. It's not one of them kids' games, isn't it? <laughs> Can you wind me back out? <laughs> can wind her up, can I? Or I could just stay there forever. I bet there's like loads of cars and stuff that are floating around with them. Um, spanners and stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm out. What are you doing? I'm gonna clean up the glue. I'm just a bit too much ooze. <laughs> My OCD. Fell down the hole. <laughs> right, so as we know with ooze it means it's full. Plenty of ooze. Nice fit really. So when all the glue goes off and then the bolts are in, then it should be a really, really strong part of the boat. As I said earlier, we've made a nice triangle. So a nice triangle down there. So you remember on the floors. So the floors we fabricated in the workshop, as I was saying, I didn't want to put a link across the top, just in case our measurements were slightly out, so it would flex to the hull, but that, they weren't giving as much, sort of. I think the terminology, in boat terminology, is panting, where the hull actually 
what do you call it? It's like it's like the ribs are moving and breathing. So this is going to sort of try and sort of dampen that effect really into it with what we've done now. So it's Look good. At that. There you go. It's quite amazing by lots of glue it makes your joints look brilliant. <laughs> Doesn't it, Jeff? It's all about my uh, little wedges were perfect. Oh, they were actually. Right, let's clean this up. So there we go, them two sole supports are in, but we need another one here. So we need to pick this ballast up, take it out, and fit a new support there. So quick chat on ballast while we're here. Um, a lot of people go mad over ballast and uh, they think this, yeah. And also a lot of people have been sending us different recommendations yeah. on things to use. Now we're really lucky on this boat. There is no short supply of ballast. Yeah, a bit too much so. Okay, we don't need any ballast ideas of new things to use for ballast because we've got piles mm. and piles of lead. Lead. So lead, lead's the best ballast in the world. Yeah, so yeah. we're really lucky. Mm. Um, obviously, it's just packaging it all and stuff. Now we can't use PVC piping no. because our bottom of our boat isn't flat. No, it's and not. it's like that. So Curvy you can't, everywhere. You, you yeah. can't lay a flat pipe yeah. over loads of ribs and loads of floors and loads it's of frames. Flexible pipe. <laughs> um, also, I wouldn't put oil in my bilge. No. So that's another reason, you know, yeah. um, we're trying to keep the bilge area as clean as possible. Hence we're putting bags. <laughs> so all the bags of ballast you've just seen us move, what we're mm. doing is we're putting them in plastic, really heavy juicy plastic bin yes. bags, cable tying them off, and then we're putting them in these white bags, basically, because yeah. these are good strong bags to lift the ballast with. Yeah, to shift it around. So, they're already the one you know apart from the lead blocks these mm. big well they are basically that they're that compact aren't they basically steel sharp but they've gone rusty and, and, they're, and they're just yeah all so they're not loose filings to get yeah. clogs in your bilge pump they are now solid blocks but i don't like the like rusty water that comes off them so that's why i'm not bothered about that <laughs> well i am because you know what i'm like so I'm, I'm trying to keep them as waterproof as possible, just so my bilge water isn't like orangey rust water colour. What colour do you want it to be? Clear, oh. like crystal clear water. Perfect water, yeah. drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> so they're already in bags themselves, then they're yeah. in our heavy duty bin bags, and then they're going in these just as a grab handle so we yeah. can move them around as we need. And say for instance, if we were to get lifted in the future yeah then we can take all the ballast out we can lift it all yeah. out because we're, we're quite a heavy boat and finding somewhere to even lift us yeah. is is, is, a, is a, another saga and we've got a rough idea on how much ballast we've got as well millions we? so, yeah. yeah about 14 ton so thank you all so much for the millions of messages about ballast but we're we are under control and yeah, we've, got we've got this sorted <laughs> um, and obviously we at the moment we're putting the ballast back where we got it from so yeah. we're not altering the ballast calculations throughout the boat and um, the boat has been coded in the past yeah. so obviously stability calculations were all done as part of coding it in the past it will get done again mm. but because they're not fixed down or screwed down we can move stuff yeah. and i think in the future i would actually like to take some out to get rid of some but there's no point in taking it out now to go ah actually there was a reason for all that ballast because yeah. I, mean, I think it's personal preference as well on how stable you want the boat yeah. you know? so we're good in our heads on what we're doing with the ballast so i hope that sort of appeases you guys a little bit more yeah. you know the people who tell us we're doing it wrong and... yeah. <laughs> so, oh there's loads of ballast experts maybe they should do the calculations for us it'd be really good if someone wants to tell me how much ballast I should have in each compartment that would be fab yes. <laughs> right back to heavy lifting yeah. 
100 100 kilograms 100 kilograms 100 kilograms so the last sole support is that what we're calling them? I don't know, who cares? That thing down the front. That Me? <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> <laughs> You're more than a thing. <laughs> um, so that's going in now, and then that's the supports done for the floor here. Um, just while I've got your attention. Attention. Do you want to listen to I'm this? I'm listening, you've listening. got me attention. Oh, okay, I was talking to them, not you. Um, we've been told we should have a disclaimer on the start of our episodes Ooh, for PPE Ooh. right because we don't wear enough hearing protection um, we said on episodes one this is not a how-to video this is how we're doing it you know we're big enough and ugly enough to know when we need to wear glasses or yeah. ear protection mm. or stuff like that we haven't come fresh out of an office job we've worked at power tools all our lives yeah. do you know what well, I mean? we've still got our 10 digits to prove it yeah. 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 Like... so thank you for your concern do you know what I mean but I feel like it would be very patronising to our audience to start putting disclaimers on that you know telling our audience what to do you know I read something re recently I think it was on Facebook something like that you know, back, back in the day Haynes Manual used to tell you how to set the valve clearances and where to put the oil. Do you know, like, and now it tells you not to drink the antifreeze. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. it's just the world gone mad. I mean, yeah. if we if we get injured, I'm not gonna sue. We can't sue each other. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, if you're working for someone, there's all these yeah. governing bodies, and you should. We're not the that. type of people that need like a warning label on a cup of coffee from McDonald's telling yeah. us it's hot. You know, so. Whatever you do, if if us our lack of PP mm. really upset you, don't watch Colin Fairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, go and get some tips off him. He uses like squint protection. Oh, we do. We use squint protection as well. Everybody, he has a tie. And... No, everybody does though. That's yeah. the thing. Everybody who's ever like actually made anything to speak of decent in the world. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not cutting corners. No. It's just getting the job done, well, mate. Sometimes we feel like we're getting the the fun knocked out of us yeah, by yeah. quite a lot of comments that we yeah. get on YouTube. So well, it kind of senses us done it and it makes us go out. Oh, yeah, let's it does. not offend people. It does, yeah, and we're not. But well, I don't think we're as fun as we used to be because you, 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 we've spent, we've had eighteen months of like kick down after kick down after kick down after kick down. So do me a favour, if if you if if you're happy in your bubble wearing your bu bubble bubble wrap suit go for it but we're fine working how we work and we are not going to change ourselves for anyone else well, we've done a lot of it haven't we oh, that's <laughs> it's what like it, the, fun, the fun is, is, is being kicked out no, of it's, us. no it's what it is i'm not bothered anyway i'm just going to keep going because that's how yeah. i know i like i know if i haven't got gloves on i'm using a grinder it's because i want to hold the grinder not protect my fingers because um, I'd be that hold the ground. No, I'm actually protecting myself. Do yeah, you know I mean? so gloves like, on, saving your finger like, if the grinder goes. Some, sometimes I don't wear a mask when I've got glasses on because they steam up. Because when they steam you up, see. you can't see what you're doing. Yeah. You're gonna cut through something else. Yeah. So it's What's like, safer having glasses on or having no vision? Just, there's so many. Uh, what do you call it? Like contradictions to health and safety, where yeah. they want you to be completely protected. The only reason they want you to be completely protected is so you don't sue the company that you're working for. That's all they give a shit about. They do not yeah. care about you yeah. all the care about is not being sued yeah. I mean, bullshit. so thank you everyone who has been concerned about our ppe but do us a favor just chill on the comments about it because it's like fucking hell, you know what i mean just can't. so these people who are actually really stressing about it have they actually ever achieved anything in the world I mean, have they actually been like have they actually took on a project like this for instance don't know. I mean, there you go the reason i wear gloves is so like Clean my hands in the day, you know, and it's like, <laughs> right, it's Stop like, hunting, it, how far do you go with PPE and health and safety? Should I be stood on this block here now because I can no. fall two feet? Scaffolded, you need scaffolding and his handrails round. It's like, oh God. If, don't get if, me going with stuff like this. If we followed every every health and safety rule, fucking not gonna get done. I got kicked off a building site once, right? I was on a scaffolding. I couldn't quite reach because I was doing some welding. 
Uh, so I've got a pallet, right? a pallet which is like, it was all sealed or anything, it was a, it was a really good pallet. And the health and safety guy was like, get off, the, get off the side, I'm sick of you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's a pallet. He went, yes, they're not tested for humans. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just covered with a ton of bricks on it or something down like that, but he thought it could fall apart. That's how, that's how thick these people are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. End of rant. <laughs> I don't want to have to rant about it again, so just, as I say, chill on, chill on the, the PP and health and safety comments, because we're fine. I feel like we lied to you last week. Did we? Yeah. What did we say? Well, we sort of said the bilge was done and then we've been back down here all. No, no, no. I suppose we haven't been doing the bilge, have we? It's been the bilge right at the bottom. So the bilge was done. Yeah, yeah. It was the ballast and the floor yeah. we've done today. So, you know what I'm really upset about? I wanted to, like, ask Simon, how about, like, tomorrow we start putting a new floor down? We can't because there's posts in the way. But I like the posts because that's holding our big cleats up at the front. So during the winter, that's where we get a lot of stresses. So. And we know our, our roof isn't very structural, so yeah. we don't want to take the support out. So I had it in my head thinking... You're going to get like a... Get a nice new... Perf yeah, shiny new floor. I could put your temporary one in. We can't. Why? I could put your temporary one in if you want. It's just a waste. Good ply though, isn't it? We'll fix these ones. Yeah. Anyway, so is that it? That's it. I'm worn out now. I'm worn out. So yeah, done. Ballast is moved. Yep. Um, we've just been having a talk about what is next. Um, uh, I think a canal boat. <laughs> <laughs> I can roll them up. <laughs> so, um, port side, there is three web frames. Yeah. But we said to be able to do them, really, we need to start taking the walls out and the benches. So we're like, right, let's concentrate on the starboard side. We've got three frames and web frames to do on this side. Um, so yeah, next week we're gonna... Hopefully not be on a bilge. You're like, I'm getting fed up with being down there. Stars away, being up and down. But still to do the frames and the web frames on this side, we've still got to empty out all the ballast that's it's under in bags, there. It's in bags, It's in bags. <laughs> bags of ballast. So, all fun and games. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, cheers, guys. Um, see you next week. See you later. Sorry about that little rant. <laughs> we love you, really. We love you all. Yeah. Right, then. Let's go.